Uh, all right, so we're going to dig into that a little bit later this hour. But uh, let's begin here. The aftershocks of the FBI's search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home continue to spread through Washington and around the country. Republicans are pressuring the Justice Department to reveal just how sensitive the documents found in that search were. Meanwhile, there's been talk from Trump supporters of a, quote, civil war. And the former president's statements appear to be fueling the angry response. Jeff Pegay says more from Washington. I myself have been notified by the Bureau that uh, my life was put in danger. Former FBI agent turned Pennsylvania Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick appearing on Face the Nation after the FBI and DHS joint warning was released on Friday. Among the threats was a plot to place a so-called dirty bomb in front of FBI headquarters, as well as online posts calling for civil war and armed rebellion. The bulletin capped off a tense week for the nation's top federal law enforcement agency. An armed man was shot and killed after trying to breach security in an FBI field office in Cincinnati. Still, the former president posted on Sunday, great simmering anger after agents carried out a search warrant to recover classified government documents from Mar-a-Lago. They didn't go in there with FBI raid jackets. Uh, they tried to constrain uh, their behavior carrying out that warrant. Release court papers reveal that more than two dozen boxes with 11 sets of classified documents were recovered by federal agents, some of which were labeled top secret after Trump lawyers attested in writing back in June that all classified material had been returned from the estate. So the fact that they were in an unsecure place uh, that is guarded with nothing more than a padlock uh, or whatever security they had at a hotel uh, is deeply alarming. Clearly, um, <clears throat> no one is above the law. Donald Trump is not above the law and Attorney General Garland is not above the law either. His actions are unprecedented in history, and he has a lot of questions to answer. So far, no charges have been filed against the former president, but possible charges include impeding an investigation the removal of classified national security records and violation of parts of the Espionage Act, according to the search warrant. Republicans are calling on the DOJ to release the affidavit. The affidavit in support of the warrant will give you the probable cause to try to understand what is going on here. And I think the American people deserve this. Democrat Mark Warner, as well as Republican Marco Rubio, both on the Senate Intelligence Committee, both calling for the release of the documents in question, as well as an assessment of the kind of damage mishandling those documents could do to national security. Anne Marie, Vlad. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. Let's bring in Tara Palmieri to talk more about the investigation. She's a senior correspondent with Puck News. Uh, Tara, it's great to see you. Uh, I read your reporting every time you put something out in Puck. So I know that you're Thank deeply you. sourced on this story. So Thanks. let me just ask you um, what you're hearing from those sources about what we could learn from the affidavit. Uh, and more importantly, is this a question of be careful what you wish for? In other words, you got both Republicans and Democrats saying the affidavit should be released. If you're a Democrat, you hope that it will show that the evidence that the attorney general was looking for at Mar-a-Lago is enough to support an indictment. If you're a Republican, you're going to point to it and say, you see, this is a big nothing burger. So what are you hearing? Exactly. I think um, releasing the affidavit, Republicans hope will be able to support their claim that this is some sort of political witch hunt. This is an overreach of power by a Democratic president, by a Democratic administration. Um, and they already, some of them think that these top secret files being, you know, in storage units in Mar-a-Lago is not, does not raise, rise the level of um, a raid, right? Um, so it's all going to be spun to each side's political advantage, but really the nuts and bolts of the affidavit are what, you know, hopefully the American people will think about seriously and decide whether they think, you know, it, it deserved the, um, the treatment that it got, the law enforcement response, which was, um, you know, some people say don't call it a raid, but a search of a, of a private home. Um, and so that that I think will help Republicans also because privately Republicans are trying to figure out, like, how aggressively should we push back against law enforcement? They are the party of law enforcement. Right. Um, and so for them, they probably need more details before they completely back Trump 
hundred percent the way they did when the raid first happened. As you know, we get more information, we find out that some of the documents were related to the types of information that everyday Americans cannot have access to and shouldn't be accessible to members of a private club. So in the meantime, the former uh, president has sort of thrown another wrench into this whole thing. And he has claimed now that he declassified these documents, sort of a wave of the presidential wand, that there was a standing order that when, you know, certain doc when documents left the White House and went to Mar-a-Lago, they were magically declassified. So I, I think we need to talk a little bit about, you know, is there any proof of that? What is the process? Can, you just, can there be a standing order to declassify stuff? And if all, the, all these documents are declassified, then it should be really easy for the public to get a list of what's in those boxes mm -hmm. because they're declassified. Exactly. Um, it doesn't appear that there was any process um, in that <laughs> declassific declassification that he said he um, that he did, he, an order he made. Um, there is a process that uh, agencies involved in the documents, the various agency heads, need to be notified of the fact that a document is being declassified. And all signs point to the fact that they were not aware of this you know, mandate that the president allegedly took, allowing him to take these uh, very sensitive documents out of the White House and into his club in Florida. Um, now, it does with us, maybe some legal scholars will pick apart the power of the president and how how does he need to communicate what he decides to do? Does that have to be in writing and this and that? But by, for, for all intents and purposes, it does not appear that that was a thoughtful you know, decision that he made, communicated to others or even the agency heads where the, the documents are relevant. And you would think at least the National Archives that were um, you know, do those documents would know, okay, this is a document that you should have gotten, but we declassified it. They seem to be not aware of that at all. So I think that whole argument is pretty mute. Also, um, the laws that President Trump has, you know, alleged to have committed or, or possibly committed, they don't relate to declassification of our uh, documents. One of them is the Espionage Act, which basically deals with the handling of just top sensitive information. It doesn't even use the word classification mm. um, in the law. So I think, you know, a legal scholar would probably tell you that maybe there's a loophole and maybe that was their strongest defense. But I can tell you that from inside Trump camp, they are taking this really serious. Um, they're deciding if the people they have representing him now are the right ones. And, you know, these public pronouncements, maybe they're trial ballooning different ideas for how to um, defend him. But uh, this is a, a serious thing. And, and if he's going to make those kind of statements, they need to be able to back that up. Yeah. And, and Tara, you point out uh, that this is a trial balloon. Uh, and we know that that is how the former president typically operates in the media space. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll get ahead of a story so that he can sort of set the narrative. Um, and then right. as more facts, actual facts come out, his narrative shifts. Mm -hmm. First, it's this is right. a raid. I've done nothing wrong. Now it's no, right. by the way, I happen to have declassified uh, this information. Um, right. And so as more and more of this information uh, comes out, it does appear that the GOP is somewhat divided on this because you mentioned Rubio and Warner, a Democrat and a Republican, sort of calling both for the release of the affidavit. But then you have some Republicans who are using really incendiary language, uh, talking about uh, civil war, talking about impeachment. Of, of the attorney general. Um, and you've got uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, who was on Face the Nation, saying that he's asking his colleagues to be more measured in their approach because we don't know what's in the affidavit. What are you hearing from Republicans, both the, you know, the Marjorie Taylor Greene types and the more measured ones like, you know, Fitzpatrick? Well, I would say the more extreme part of the party, um, they're using this as some sort of ammunition uh, to create the perception that Trump is a political martyr. And um, this will only help him in his political future as he has communicated to almost everyone that he he said on the record, he's to run for president again, right? Um, now, Trump is the one who's going to deal with the least step back for a second and decide how hard we're going to go against law enforcement, which, by the way, they used, you know, law enforcement um, as, a, you know, a rallying cry when they went after uh, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State at the time for mishandling her emails. Um, so it's like you can't, you can't really pick and choose when you are going to vilify the police or when you are going to use the law enforcement to your advantage. I do think so. one of the things about um, President Trump is that he creates a lot of noise yeah. around everything. There's so much noise. I mean, even 
the as you talked about it, uh, Vlad, it just feels like it's been a week, but it's been so many rapid fire statements from him coming at totally different directions. And if we're journalists following every little minutia of this, and it's difficult to keep track of all the statements he's made, I'm sure the American public, who's probably not prying apart every statement he makes on Truth Social or a lawyer statement on Fox News, et cetera, are probably also sort of confused, right? Um, yeah, because, so no, but Tara, you, you, you make that, an excellent... Tara, you make an excellent point about that. Um, the fact that he's slinging so many arguments out there on Truth Social that it's really, really hard even for his allies to keep up with them. But one of the things, and you pointed this out, and that's what I wanted to ask you real quick before we let you go. Um, you, you mentioned former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Um, the former president has tried to use her the allegations of her unsecured server that she had in her home in Chappaqua and also <laughs> former President Obama's uh, documents that he has for his presidential library. Just real quick before we go, just break mm -hmm. down. I mean, you're not hearing, you know, uh, m most Republicans talking about Hillary Clinton, because if you do, a lot of them are on the record way back in 2016 saying, that, you know, what she did was wrong and she's not fit to be president of the United States. And now those right. same Republicans are like, wait a second, uh, if it just happens to be a document with nuclear secrets on it, well, let's see what type of nuclear secrets are on there before we jump to conclusions. I mean, just explain to the audience yeah. why what, what, what Trump is talking about when it comes to Obama and Clinton are completely different from what the Department of Justice is alleging here. Totally. I mean, here's the one thing I just want to point out as well is that President Trump escalated the severity of the crime of mishandling of documents, right, of sensitive documents when he came into office. That was seen as a sort of dig, uh, you know, to, it was a sort of a way of going after the crimes that, you know, Hillary Clinton was alleged to have committed or accused of having committed. So it's like he, he actually increased the severity of this crime. Um, I think it's all, you know, it becomes a lot of whataboutism, right, mm -hmm. um, with all of this. I think both sides are trying to figure out what, are the, the the unknowns and how they can use them politically. Um, and we don't know, there are a lot of things we still don't know about it, which is like, I can understand why some more cautious Republicans might say, let's actually see the affidavit. And some who are less cautious too, saying whatever's in it, we'll use it against them because nothing can be worthy of a, you know, a raid against the former president. And it's, it's just, it's a lot of noise right now. And the truth is it's a vacuum. And I think, um, the attorney general, by stepping up and doing a press conference, releasing the warrant, that was the right move, right? As, as, even as we hear all this escalation of tension, uh, people talking about violence against law enforcement officials, the FBI, dirty bombs, you know, there's a vacuum being created and it's being filled by people who are attacking um, Merrick Garland um, and the Justice Department right now. So the more information, the better. But as we know, sometimes the law enforcement officials are very careful to keep that information close because they don't want to impede the investigation, right? They don't want to, to show their hand. And that's what makes this advantage that Trump has vacuum. He's filling it with the conspiracies right now. And I think when the dust settles, there are a few smart people who realize they might be held accountable for how they initially reacted to this, especially if they end up running for president in 2024 on the Republican side. Yeah. Uh, Tara uh, Palmari, thank you very much. Thank you.